lives, and uh, we want to talk about that just for a few moments. Uh, I do need to mention, I should have mentioned this earlier, and I apologize, uh, about confirmation class. If you've signed your child up for that, I'll be calling this week uh, and setting a time for those classes to start. Uh, so having said that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Greg, thank you, brother. That was a great song. Heavenly Father, we just praise you today. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for the words of life that you spoke so many years ago that <clears throat> impact our lives each and every day. Lord, I just ask now that as I bring forth your message and your word to your people that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit so that the words I speak and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable unto you, that all the praise, the glory, and the honor would be given to Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we have gathered. And it's in his name we now pray. Amen. I tell you, I'm always a little hesitant sometimes to go to the book of James because James has a way of going directly to the message and to the point. He doesn't skirt issues. He doesn't mince words. He simply tells it as God would have us to know it and to understand it. And all the things that he writes about seem to me to be daily stuff. Things that impact our life each and every single day. Things that we use in the workplace and at home and just having a day out. Words or our ability to talk and to have conversation with one another and even sometimes have conversations with ourselves. Anybody ever talk to themselves? Okay. All right. What's the thing, just as long as you're not answering yourself back, you're okay. I, th I think that's what they say. Anybody here answer themselves back? Okay, all right. A few of you are okay. Okay. But anyway, uh, you know, that ability to talk is an awesome, awesome thing. And we, however, as human beings, I feel, don't always realize the power of our words and how they can influence and affect not just our lives, but the lives of everyone else who is around us. What's worse, sometimes we do realize how they affect others or ourselves, and heaven forbid we use them anyway. I think we're guilty of that as well. But in truth, I don't believe we have ever been given, and I mean this from the depth of my heart, I've thought about this a little bit this way, I don't think that we have been given by God anything more powerful than the ability to speak words and to say words to other people who live around us. There is power in words. There is a God-given power that we have to use words in our life. And I can't help but wonder how often God has probably thought to himself, why did I give them the ability to talk? You think God ever thinks that? Why did I allow Tom Tucker... The ability to speak words as he does. God has to regret it on occasion looking down on us. Isn't that right? Our ability to speak to one another has gotten us into trouble from the beginning of time. Honey, here's a delicious piece of fruit. Take a bite. And it's been downhill. The power of our words to influence is something enormous. And for the parents out there who've raised children and have teenagers, have you ever wished at times you had never taught them how to put sentences together? When you hear what's coming out of their mouth sometimes, you just sit there bewildered at what's going on or what's going through their minds. James acknowledges the power of our words in ways nobody else does in Scripture. He reminds us how diligent we must be 
to guard the words that we speak from our mouths as we direct them towards other people. This morning, I want to let James teach us about how to be aware of just how powerful our words can be. Because our tongue is a small part of our body and something we find necessary and useful does not mean we have control of it. It's small. He was right. You know, he's talking about a massive ship being guided by a little rudder. And the thing right there, it's little. It's a very small part of our body. But what power comes from using this in our mouth? James explains that as he illustrates that a small bit in a horse's mouth guides this enormous beast that is so powerful. And how again that the massive ship by a small rudder can be turned in any direction the person wants. But then James tells us in verse 5, so also the tongue is a small part of the body and yet it boasts of great things. Behold how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. We can light it up, can't we? From time to time. The tongue, as small as it is, has a power unmatched even by a massive ship or a strong-willed horse. Never underestimate how difficult it is to control your tongue. Or at least restrain it. I, I've come to the conclusion, I'm not sure we, we can control it. I, I'm not sure we can do it. But we need to learn how to constrain it and guide it as best we can guide it. Here's why we have difficulty controlling our tongue in the words we speak. I believe it's directly connected to the war that rages within us between the spirit and the flesh. I think it's all tied together. The times our words cause us the biggest problems is when we allow our emotions and our immediate feelings and our fleshly feelings to control this. When we're operating in the flesh and responding by emotion and other things that we feel, then is when we have problems constraining or controlling what words come out, of our, come out of our mouths. That's the times that our words cause us the biggest problems. When we give in to the moment and allow our words to be directed by our human feelings, that's when we open our mouth and insert our foot more often than not, right? Isn't that when we do it? Anybody ever stuck their foot in their mouth? That's when it happens. In the moment, in that moment. Think about Jesus. Who was what? I preached on this not long ago. The word who became what? Flesh. Jesus was the purity of God's word. Everything Jesus said was wonderful. He never spoke out of the flesh, but always spoke out of the spirit. He always spoke out of the spirit. His words offered grace, offered hope, offered forgiveness, offered life. His words uplifted the hearts of those who were downcast and pushed aside. Whatever he said, he spoke to benefit a lost world. Even if it came across 
as anger or harshness. It was disciplining out of love for a lost world. He was the word and his words were pure and perfect. He was the only one who lived who never sinned and he is the only one who has lived who has never spoken an ill word or an ill-gotten word. His language was fresh. What do we call his word? Anybody want to take a shot at it? We call it the gospel. What does the gospel translate as? Good news. Jesus spoke good news. People love to follow him and be around him because he spoke good news. He uplifted the people around him by his words. He never wasted words. And too often we let our words be guided by everything else but the words of Jesus. We become angry. We respond to hurt feelings. Someone insults our pride and man, that's all it takes, right? And we're ready to exchange words with that person. We're ready to let them fly. We've got them lined up, don't we? We've got them lined up. Verse 9 says, with it we bless our Lord and Father and with it curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. While we read in Genesis that God by his word alone did what? God created everything. How did he do it? He, what, spoke it into existence. God said, let there be light. And what? There was light. You see the power, the creative power of the word? God spoke into existence the universe and the world that we enjoy. He spoke it. He spoke it. We also have spoken into existence a lot of things as well. I'll be the first to tell you, most of the problems I have, I spoke into existence. My words have created the problems that I face in life a lot of times. See, we can, we can create things with our, with our words as well, can't we? We're very creative. We also have spoken into existence... Love and good things. So we, we're a mixed package of words. The means by which we can change the problems with words is very simple. I mean, I don't think this doesn't take a, a rocket science or, or scientist or anybody really brilliant or uh, to figure this one out, at least. From my perspective, the means by which we can change this problem is to learn to speak like Jesus. Jesus didn't seem to have a problem speaking words and in, in speaking into existence the things that were necessary for us to know God. So for me, I'm thinking if I want to Use my words in a creative way. Why not use them as Jesus did? Why not speak as Christ spoke? Why not learn how to speak words which God would speak if he were here? The truth is we can only draw from resources that are within us. Okay? Now here's the problem. If you want to create a vocabulary of godly words, then you have to ingest God into your life. You have to dwell on the words of God and put those into your system 
if you want to speak them out when the time comes to do that. Someone backs into your brand new car at church and drives away without leaving a note. What words come out? What words come out? Someone harms you or does something to you. What words come out? You want to know what words come out? Whatever words are in there. Whatever words are in there. The answer to gaining control of our tongue or restraining our tongue is to know Jesus better. To know the word better. To believe the word more. To hear the voice of God. To draw close by the Holy Spirit. To desire above all thing, uh, all thing else, uh, anything else, to desire to have those words. And to speak godly things. 